Hey, how goes it? Welcome to Dividend Compounders with Cheese. Today, let's talk about Aries Capital Corporation, ticker symbol ARCC, also known as ARC. And I'm not talking about Kathy Wood's Innovation Fund. Some people are obsessed with SCHC. Other people are obsessed with ARC. In this video, we are going to look at the intangibles, the finances, and run some valuation models to determine if it's a delicious or a disgusting dividend stock. ARC is a business development company also known as a BDC. And as a BDC, they are an investment firm that provides long-term loans and equity capital to companies who otherwise can't get funding due to their risk profile. So essentially, Aries partners with entrepreneurs, startups, and other businesses who have an annual EBITDA of between $10 million and $250 million. But what exactly is a BDC? Well, they provide financing and loans to companies that are considered too small to offer an IPO or go public, or they're just too risky by the traditional banks to deal with. So when we think about Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or even JP Morgan Chase, they will not do business with these companies. And that's where a BDC comes in. Somebody needs to help these startups, right? So think of it as like Shark Tank. These baby companies with an interesting business model, needing extra funding or capital to expand, grow, or scale their idea, will go to a BDC. And it is important to mention that BDCs, like Aries, deal with a whole portfolio of different companies. And so the interest from the loans they lend out, well, it tends to be sporadic. Some months, Aries makes a lot, and other months, not as much. Now currently, ARC has a $11.3 billion market cap, which makes them the biggest BDC in valuation. And it's also important to note that Aries Capital is externally managed by Aries Management. Same financial conglomerate parent company, essentially. We will do a deep dive on that later. Internal versus external. Something else to take into consideration when it comes to BDCs? Well, they are required by law to pay out 90% of their taxable income to shareholders. Who else does this? REITs. So because of this, they are a popular option for income-oriented investors or anyone who wants a steady dividend cash flow pouring onto their breakfast plates. All right, so this is a channel that is focused on dividend compounders. So let's go ahead and check out their dividend over the years. You might not like what you are about to see. This is great. But anyways, in 2013, the annual dividend payment, $1.57. Last year, 2022, annual dividend payment, $1.87. So are you telling me that the dividend has been essentially flat throughout the decade? But what about their dividend profile? Currently, they have a 9.71% dividend yield. We're just going to go ahead and say 10% for simplicity's sakes, which means for every share of ARC that you own, you get paid $1.92 in dividends per year. And the payout schedule is every quarter or or three months. I'm the kind of person that likes to be upfront and honest and share everything about me on the first date, second date. I don't hold back. So now that we got some of the ugly things out of the way, check this out. If you invested $1,000 in 2013 into ARC, well today it would be worth $3,151 if you reinvested the dividends every quarter. So it's not exactly a terrible investment idea. Hopefully you are still interested. Let's go ahead and move on to their business model and their economic moat if they have have one. So how exactly does ARC make revenue? Well, BDCs earn income by offering loans and receiving interest from them just like the banks. So a BDC to a small growing company is literally a saving grace because then those companies can use that capital to fund acquisitions, leverage buyouts, give the green light to growth projects, and to do restructurings. So they have over 490 companies across nearly every single industry that you can think of. So their business model is kind of like a credit card company who gives out loans or will you take out credit through them. However, it's a lot more lucrative because ARC also has an equity stake in almost every single one of their clients. So if their clients grow big, then ARC gets rewarded. This is a huge win in the intangible category. And in my personal opinion, with a background in consulting, I would say that is one of their biggest economic advantages. Think of ARC as the hot girl that everyone wants to date. They have all the power in negotiation and will most likely be the preferred BDC that small companies want to work with because of their track record, history, and reputation. And so, their economic advantage is their scale of operations compared to other BDCs that are short-staffed or smaller. So next, we are going to go ahead and talk about the downsides of ARC. So to me, the first downside of ARC is that they are an externally managed BDC. And with an internal management team, what you get is that they tend to be a little more conservative with their finances and numbers, and they have a 
higher barrier to entry for companies seeking investment opportunities with them. But when you think about an externally managed BDC like ARK, well, in that case, growth is the name of the game. Statistically, this does lead to more winners than losers, and it's a numbers game. You, the investor, agree to be a part of this risky roller coaster ride for bigger returns. Moving right along to the rest of the downslides, because the list is pretty long, Santa would be proud. Let's go ahead and talk about their dividend. So unlike Main Street Capital, which is their competitor in the BDC space, they pay a monthly dividend. In lieu of that, ARC pays their dividend every quarter or three months. I don't really think this is a bad thing. However, would I prefer a monthly dividend, such as like Realty Income Corporation or Main? Yes, I would prefer to get a dividend every month. Also, the dividend itself from ARC, yeah, they're not going to be qualified, which means they are going to be taxed at your income tax bracket. And as we saw earlier, they have a non-existent dividend growth rate. To make up for it, what they do is they pay a special dividend every once in a while to bridge that gap. And I think this is a really big downside. It is a really risky industry. By nature, their business model is lending out loans that companies that are super risky and usually have less than desirable credit ratings. So not only is their industry risky, but they're also hugely dependent on the macroeconomic environment. Aries Capital's business model depends on the interest rates. Right now, it's hovering at around 5%. If they're too high, then it becomes more expensive for them to borrow funds, and it can have an effect on ARC's profit margins. The issue that I have with this is that they lend money at really high interest rates to these small, speculative, risky companies. When the economy heads toward a downturn, the price does not hesitate to crash 70 to 80% easily. When I look back since their inception, every single time there's fear or doom in the market, this stock crashes like crazy. Why that is a call out? The economy decides to poop its pants from eating way too much fried food on a Friday night? Well, then ARK's clients have a higher risk of loan default and even filing for bankruptcy. And circling back to the fact that Aries Capital is externally managed, well, this leads to conflicts of interest in prioritizing what to do during the tough times. They even call it out in their annual report like, hey, this is a potential caution. I took this clip from one of their annual reports. And something else that I don't really like about externally managed BDCs, well, they often charge higher operational and management fees. And like in a bakery, they bake those fees into your gains like an ETF would. My apologies, I sound so bearish on the company. So let's go ahead and move on to the upsides. What are the advantages of ARC? Well, number one, they have a super high dividend yield that's been consistently at 9 to 10% throughout the years. And do you remember how I talked about they have to pay out 90% of their profits to shareholders? Well, they're required by law to do that, just like REITs. So their dividend yields are always going to be juicy. And sometimes they give a special dividend, like I mentioned earlier, usually every three months to make sure that they are distributing 90% if they have leftover cash. So what a BDC usually does, this is tricky accounting. The management team will forecast to distribute about 89% of their profits just in case so that they don't have to give out more than they need to. Because as a business, they don't want to give out 91% if they're only required to do 90. Hopefully you are learning a thing or two from this video. And if you are, please give a like on the video, please. All right, even if you decide not to click like on the video, moving right along to number two, you get to be an investor to the private market. By investing in ARC, you're indirectly investing in private companies that are not available on the stock market. Some of these companies have the potential to be 10 baggers. So think of ARC's portfolio like an ETF. It's just full of different companies and different industries, and you're investing in essentially all of them. And you might not agree with me, but I think this is an advantage. Compared to Main Street Capital, ARC has less industry diversification. 23% of their portfolio, meaning 23% of their clients that they support, they're in the SaaS category, software as a service. To me, this is a value add to a portfolio because SaaS companies tend to have higher profit margins with lower overhead costs. And the next reason, I'm just going to say it again. Their dividend yield is 10%. And according to their finances and forecasts, it's exactly where they want to be. And the next advantage of ARC, well, it's another intangible. Because ARC has a parent company that is the external management team, well, they have a ton of relationships developed with different PE sponsors. Aries Capital, the BDC arm, usually gets first dibs with companies looking for financing because of those relationships. And since they are the big biggest BDC in the country, a reputation that speaks for itself, they are able to recruit and pay for the best talent in the game.
game. And from a quick LinkedIn search, nearly all of their associates are from the Ivy League or have a degree from a top MBA program. And I do not want to sound elitist because I do come from a low working class background. America's best and brightest are managing the deals, the finances, and evaluating risk. So it's up to you to decide whether the upsides outweigh the downsides or not. The total return for ARC for the past 10 years has been 186%. That is phenomenal. Which when you break down year over year, that's 11% CAGR. CAGR is essentially the compound annual growth rate where you reinvest the dividends and the profits back into the stock to let the investment grow and compound. If you are impressed with this 10 year number of 186%, well, I'm about to blow your mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 15 year total return is 1,986%. Oh, my goodness. And when you break it down year over year, the Kager is 22%. 22%. Oh, talking about pooping pants earlier, I think I just released a fudge bubble. I, I'm going to have to go change my boxers. But wow, almost 2000%. So it's currently around 7.30 a.m. I am absolutely hungry. I need to have my breakfast. And I promise if you stick around, we are going to run some valuation models to figure out the intrinsic value for ARC. The next thing that we are going to talk about is the shares outstanding. We want to find out if the company is issuing more shares and diluting the shareholders or are they buying back shares. This is a huge disclaimer that I want to make. What you have to know about ARC, they are going to be constantly issuing new shares because they are required by law to distribute 90% of their profits to shareholders. Issuing new shares is how they acquire more equity to invest in new deals and to expand and to grow. So adding shares is done by design and this is the business model of BDCs. Back in 2000, 2009, there was about 100 million shares outstanding. And now recently, they almost have 600 million shares outstanding. This is not something to be alarmed about. All right, so I went through the entire recent Q3 earnings report, and this is some of the highlights. So how is ARC's business operations doing? Well, if you look at the net income year over year, since September of 2022, it has been increasing in a positive trend, and this is a good thing that you want to see in a BDC. And because ARC is in an industry that is heavy with the loans and the next thing that I like to look at is the cash and cash equivalents to figure out their liquidity situation. So if you look at September 2022, they had $257 million in hand. And since then, it's just been increasing year over year. And now they have about half a billion dollars of cash on hand. But when you compare that to their total liabilities, they have over $12 billion. Oh, and the last thing that I want to call out from their earnings presentation is the turnover of clients. So they added $410 million of investment commitments. However, they exited $158 million. Remember how I said an externally managed BDC is constantly growing? Well, this is the proof in the pudding. What does that phrase even mean? I just heard it throughout my life. Anyways, we have finally made it to the valuation model portion of the video. And personally, this is my most favorite part of the video. The numbers and the data. Data, they tell a different story and they cannot lie. So it's more of an objective way to evaluate the company. So what we are going to do is run these valuation models to figure out the intrinsic value for ARC and then compare that to what the Wall Street analysts believe the price target should be. So the first one is going to be the multiples valuation model. So essentially what we are going to do is compare ARC to companies in the same industry as them and every single one of these companies right here are a BDC. The media and PE ratio is 7.8. So when we take all of this into consideration, the intrinsic price for ARC becomes $17.95. And a call out that I want to make is that although right now ARC is trading at around $19, it's trading at a premium because it's one of the best in class BDCs available. So people are willing to pay more for it. And the example that I want to use is the chip industry. When you think about what's hot, it's AMD. So AMD trades for a premium price compared to say Intel because Intel chips are completely trash. All right, before I ruffle any more feathers, let's go ahead and move on to the dividend discount model valuation. Essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to look at the average dividend growth rate to figure out an intrinsic value for ARC. So the data says the average dividend growth rate for the past five years
years is sitting at 3.79%. However, historically, it's more so around 0%. We are just going to go ahead and shave 1% off of this number. So we're going to say 2.8%, which is going to give us an intrinsic value, $37.96. That sounds a little high, but that is based on the data and what is actually happening. Alrighty, the last valuation model is the bear valuation model. Just kidding. It's the Benny Graham's valuation model. Essentially, we are looking at the growth rate projection and taking into consideration the current AAA corporate bonds yield rate, plugging that into the formula to spit out $16.46 per share, which takes us to the conclusion. What is the intrinsic value for ARC? Hey, Jimmy, do you think you can give me a drum roll, please? da 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 well, we reached $24.19 per share, but I'm really curious about what does Wall Street think? Wall Street says that ARC is worth $20.20. The low forecast is $18 and the high forecast is $21. We said $24. Wall Street says 20. It's currently trading roughly at about $19 plus or minus a dollar or two. So after seeing and hearing everything, you're kind of interested in ARC and you're thinking, what is the acceptable buy price? The current trading price, roughly $19.50. When you bake in a 10% margin of safety, then your acceptable buy price is $21.77. But you've learned that BDCs are in a very risky industry. So you want more of a margin of safety baked in. With a 20% margin, of safety baked in, well, then your acceptable buy price becomes $19.35. And this is a stock that is pretty volatile. And when you look at its 52-week range, its low was $16.95, its high was $20.17. So if you're looking at to jump in at $19.35, that's absolutely plausible. If you are trying to jump in when it reaches that 52-week low price again, $16.69, well, you get a 31% margin of safety in that case. So what is my opinion of ARC? Well, after going through the numbers, learning about their story, educating ourselves about their business model, well, I think ARC is a delicious delicious dividend stock. It is super risky, but nonetheless, I think it is delicious. You can't turn away from that 10% dividend yield because usually when it comes to normal companies, a 10% dividend yield is a red flag. But in the BDC industry, a 10% dividend yield is normal. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I like ARC. I like the company and I like the stock. In fact, I would consider jumping in at the right price. I don't really have a set price in mind. Well, because there's other companies on my radar and it's in such a risky industry. I would need a really big margin of safety baked in compensate for the risk reward factor. So if you are considering ARC or Maine, which by the way, I made a video about Maine. You should check that one out. Think of it as investing into a mini ETF. Maine and ARC, they're investing invested into the success of a whole bunch of different companies that are within their portfolio, their clients. Before I forget, I wanted to talk about their risk profile. So their credit rating is not exactly the best, but it's not terrible either. Sitting at triple B rating, they have about $5.3 billion of available liquidity. And this is really important, and I forgot to mention it earlier in the video. Their screening criteria for a potential client for them to invest in them, well, there's a lot of things that they look at. And one of those categories is to to make sure that the company is not in a cyclical industry. So ARC does not invest in clients or startups that are in the airline industry, construction, forest products, leasing, railroads, shipping, or steel. Anyways, if you made it to this point in the video, would you consider subscribing to the channel? I would genuinely appreciate it because I'm about to eat breakfast and by you subscribing, it would help the channel out a lot because right now it's really small. However, one day I do believe the channel is going to be monetized. And the first upgrade that I'm eyeballing is getting a new microphone to replace this cheap piece of crap that I've been using since the pandemic for my Zoom meetings. A man can dream. I'm thinking of getting the Blue Yeti so that the production value of the videos can be better. Anyways, I'll talk to you next time. This is Dividend Compounders with Cheese, signing out. Stay safe.